we move on with 13A3. Um, <laughs> solutions in satisfying 13A3 procurement requirements, our next speaker, Zinsi. Um, I love 13A3. Okay. As the organics program manager at Zero Waste Sonoma, Zinsi leads the countywide implementation of 13A3, um, is involved in the county's efforts to permit and site a new composting facility, organizes annual compost giveaway events, and manages several grants related to carbon sequestration and food recovery, amongst other responsibilities for joining the compost industries and see or to be S in ecology, evolution, and behavior from the University of Minnesota. Her senior research project involves studying the mating behaviors of crickets. You'll have to ask her about that later. Welcome, Zinsi. Okay, thank you very much. I forgot I put that thing about crickets in there. If you ask me about crickets or evolution, I will talk your ear off. <laughs> okay, so my name is Zinsi, as mentioned. And uh, just really quickly, in case people don't know us, um, Zero Waste Sonoma is a Joint Powers Authority, or a JPA. So we serve and represent 10 jurisdictions in Sonoma County. Um, I manage the organics program, of course, but we do a lot of, of other things. Um, what you've heard about with oops, solar panels, from my coworker, Courtney. Um, and that's a picture of our team. We have eight staff members and our link uh, to the webpage. <laughs> just to give you, get you situated, Sonoma County is just north of San Francisco. It's outlined in red. And you can see from the yellow pinpoints, that's where we send our residential organic material. And the red pinpoint is where we send our commercial organics. So, um, Annually, we have about 83,000 tons of residential material and about 30,000 tons of commercial and debris box. And as you can see, most of our accounts are residential accounts, but we have a good number of multifamily and commercial as well. So procurement, I think we're all concerned about it. Uh, and this might sound familiar to some of you here in the Bay Area, but in Sonoma County, we have a very strong agricultural sector. So uh, we were very concerned that if jurisdictions just went out and directly procured compost and mulch, they would be in competition with the existing agricultural industry as well as with each other. So um, that was not necessarily a solution that we wanted to just jump into. So the first and most obvious solution for us to meet procurement targets was uh, compost giveaway events. This is because the three compost, the three residential organics uh, contracts that I have with the facilities each have an annual allotment of compost that we have, uh, and it's 1,700 cubic yards of compost we have annually. And previous to 1383, uh, we actually didn't use any of that compost, but in 2022, yeah, 2022, um, I was able to organize 25 giveaway events and 10 donations, uh, and this was done with a legion of volunteers. I couldn't have done this myself. And in 2023, we had 23 giveaway events and 17 donations. So the donations were given to nonprofit farms, uh, schools, and community co restoration projects. So uh, anybody can email me and ask for compost. And as long as they fit that criteria, I do send them a truckload. Here are some pictures. People love the compost. So uh, as you can see, I have the compost delivered in bulk and people have to shovel what they want. And this really helps to limit how much they take. <laughs> Uh, but it's really, really popular, and you know the kids get involved. Uh, everybody really loves it. But I realize this is not a very sustainable model. I mean, not only is it very little a drop in the bucket for us to meet procurement targets, but it's also not very accessible. You know, there are some people who can't attend the events. Most of my events are on the weekends, and um, some people cannot shovel, or they need more time to shovel because the line is really long, and they need to keep moving. So as a result, I uh, found out about Stop Waste or Alameda County's Compost Hub program and decided we should do that in Sonoma County too. So I have identified three sites that I'm hoping to open this spring and all three of them, <laughs> yeah, very exciting. <laughs> all three of them are adjacent to a garden or a farm so that the, they can utilize the compost in return for 
overseeing the site and making sure you know it's like cleaned up and looks nice. They, what I asked the sites to be is open at least four hours a week, or I'm sorry, four hours, yeah, per week, year round. The only exception to this is the site in Katadi, which uh, they were only able to have the site be open twice a month, but they have additional time slots uh, that people can reserve, like just on an as needed basis or reservations. And then each truckload of compost would be either 20 cubic yards or 40 cubic yards, depending on the facility that they want the compost to be from. And learning from Alameda County's um, compost hub experience, they said that it was a lot easier if I just connected the site managers with the compost facility directly and they could just order it and I'll just get a monthly invoice. Uh, so that's what I'm planning to do, cut down on the mill. Oh. Did I do that? <laughs> okay. Um, to cut down on the middlemen. Um, so just based on Alameda County's experience, I am anticipating one to two deliveries a month, which isn't really too much. I am trying to identify locations in the Sonoma Valley and the West County because that's where um, it's just gonna be underserved if I don't have any there. All right, compost rebate. Uh, some of you might already have heard about this. I've talked about it a bunch in the last couple of years. But uh, another solution that I decided to go after was uh, to create this compost rebate program where if we have already all these purchasers uh, in Sonoma County using compost, we can use them as direct service providers to meet the procurement targets. And essentially, they would get a check for 10% of their purchase. Um, and as long as they meet the minimum threshold of buying at least 30 cubic yards of compost or mulch in a year. So if they have like multiple invoices and it adds up to 30 cubic yards, that that's fine. A little bit more detail about the program. So it was created with the input and the blessing of CalRecycle. But the thing they were very adamant about was uh, people have to sign a rebate agreement before their purchases can count towards um, the procurement targets. And so uh, this is what we have to do, and that's that's fine. And it's a 10% rebate, like I said. The maximum claims that they can have in a fiscal year is 25,000. So that means they can get up to $25,000 in a year. No one's reached that limit yet. Um, and compost and mulch has to be spread in Sonoma County. This is not part of 1383. It was mainly just our jurisdictions wanted the carbon sequestration to be local. So I put that requirement in there. Uh, the rebate can only be applied to the cost of compost and mulch and not any derivatives, uh, so like soil blends, not transportation or spreading. Uh, and then starting in July of this year, I am planning to increase the rebate to 20% and to decrease the threshold to 20 cubic yards because that was a more common truck size uh, and to encourage participation. All right, so I'm just trying to go fast. Um, the other things I've been working on, I've, I have two grants that are kind of ongoing. One is a local county grant. The county essentially got some PG&E settlement funds and decided to allocate half a million dollars to carbon sequestration, which is great. So we have a bunch of partners that were listed up there in the first bullet point. Um, and the compost was applied either through community or agricultural sites. So most of that is done now. Right now we're just working on reports. And then the other grant is a federal grant through the USDA. And uh, that is with U um, sorry, Zero Footprint, Daily Acts, and Penluma Bounty, which is a local food recovery organization. The purpose of this grant was not only to increase carbon sequestration, but also to increase the network of food recovery, um, yeah, food recovery network in Sonoma County. So that grant is ongoing currently, and it runs through May of next year. So I'm very happy to say that from all of these programs that I worked on, we got really, really close to meeting our procurement targets for 2023. So I'm so, so happy. <laughs> um, so you can see in bold, uh, we have about 16,422 cubic yards of compost. I did do a rough calculation. It was just like I did a two to one ratio of cubic yards to tons. Uh, I'll, polish that up later, but you can see the last line, our 2023 target was um, 16,850 cubic yards. So very excited. However, I am a little bit scared because obviously 2023, we only need to meet 30% of it. So I have no idea how we're gonna meet 100%. <laughs> 
The last thing I'll talk about is uh, contamination. I could have another whole other speech about this, but one of the effects of 1383 and having mandatory collection is we are unfortunately seeing increased contamination. So all these pictures are sent in to me by our car, uh, compost facilities. So you can see there's a lot of plastic film, there's a lot of uh, paper plates, foodware, but also bottom right-hand corner is concrete. Wonderful. <laughs> We are working on, on a contamination campaign, um, hoping to launch most of it this spring and taking a lot of uh, notes from how San Mateo County is doing it because they have focus groups and they've been um, getting a lot of data that way. So I'm very excited. This is a screenshot of the billboard that was aired this last month, but a lot more content uh, to be created. Thank you very much. on time, right on time. Do, does anyone have questions for Zinzi? Oh, there's one up there. I see one up there. The mic is coming, the mic is coming. Yes. Can you hear me? Oh yeah, you can, okay. Um, that was a great presentation, Zinzi. Um, okay, so here's my question about the contamination. Um, are you guys doing any before, like baseline sampling, and then after you've had the campaign up for a while, some more sampling to see if, had, if it's had any effect? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so admittedly, no, I have, I guess my baseline is really based on the um, reports and the emails and the pictures that are at Compost facilities have been sending us because Previous to the last two years, I never got a contamination notice like this. We've never gotten fine from the three compost facilities I contract with. Um, our contamination was always under 1%, and now it's inching up. Um, and so I think I'll know if the campaign works if I stop getting fined by the compost <laughs> facilities. Okay, let's do over here first. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Great. Uh, it's kind of a two-parter. What was like the general startup cost for getting those compost hubs going? And do you have any tips for other jurisdictions that want to start their own compost hubs? Um, so I would say most of the cost was my staff time, just uh, trying to figure out like the MOU and talking to these sites, identifying the sites and uh, negotiating the terms of the, of the MOU. The compost is going to be coming initially, at least from the annual allotment that I have uh, from the compost facilities. This is because I'm hoping that these compost hubs will eventually replace most of my compost giveaway events. Um, we might have to have a few here and there for the services, or sorry, for the regions that are underserved. Uh, hi, um, my question is uh, for your contamination, uh, are the haulers in your jurisdiction able to identify uh, the site-specific um, instances of contamination or are you getting that after like it reaches the processing facility, your Richmond facility? That is the heart of the issue. <laughs> so unfortunately, it's been very hard to track down which um, which is where are the sources of contamination. And this is because it seems like a lot of residents put the contamination down under in, inside the bin and then they have like yard waste on top. And so the haulers, um, when they do tip, oftentimes they don't see the contamination until it's already in the truck. Uh, and so that's been a challenge. And I've been, you know, communicating with the haulers and trying to emphasize that their truck drivers do need to tag if they see that kind of thing. Um, but it's been challenging because we mainly get, what, what happens is I get the contamination fine from the facility, but the organics has already been consolidated at our transfer stations, which, you know, it's like four truckloads per transfer station. And then it's like, which neighborhood was it? Which resident was it? No idea. So we're still trying to figure that out. Our, Oh, are we going to do fines? No, I'm not going to find the residents. <laughs> but well, I guess I, I'll take that back. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> the, the haulers have the ability to find the residents, but I don't think Zero Waste Sonoma is going to. So, yeah. 
<laughs> no more questions? Okay. Thank you, Zinsi. All right. I have to say, I saw my first, like, oops tag at a, on a compost bin, and I was like, bam.